Hello, my fellow communicators, my storytellers. Thank you so much for joining me today. As always, I'm Abby, and this is Stories Lived, Stories Told. And with the help of the CMM Institute, we're using this podcast as a space to have this ongoing conversation about how we communicate and how we can be better. Because when we communicate better, our relationships get better. Our mental health gets better, our society gets better, our work gets better, our lives get better. We do this by using the Communication Theory Coordinated Management of Meaning, or CMM, and bringing the tools, language, and knowledge that this theory offers into our everyday lives so that we can actually put it to use with the goal of creating better social worlds for ourselves. So with that, let's begin. Today, I would love very much to talk about awareness, what it looks like when we bring awareness to our communication and how that awareness changes things for the better. We have to talk about awareness, right? Have a whole episode about it because I think it's safe to say that most of the time we exist on autopilot. It's easy to do. We just fall right into it, especially if we're in patterns that we've been in for a long time or relationships that we've been in for a long time. You know what you do, you know what the other person does, you know what to expect out of any interactions. And so for the most part, you could make it through your day, your week, your year, your life on autopilot. And really you could probably be just fine. But fine isn't our goal. We're trying to make better social worlds. So this is something we want to question and explore a little bit deeper. And in my mind, even just bringing awareness to the fact that you usually are on autopilot is like step number one. That's the place to start. So if we're not on autopilot, then, you know, what are we? We are aware. And I think the other part of that is we are present and we're actively engaged in the conversation that we're in, the relationship we're in, the space we're in, whatever it is, you are making choices about how you show up in that rather than falling into old patterns. So getting out of autopilot is about being really present and being really tuned in. And I want to make sure I say this early on in the episode is that to me, the connotations or, you know, what the word awareness means, the other layers that are there, is that awareness is something that is non-judgmental. If you are aware that you are falling into autopilot in your relationship or that you're contributing to these destructive patterns, all you're doing is noting, right? And that's, I, I know I talk about meditation, but I think it has some really helpful language and tools that can be lifted out of a meditation practice into our communication and the choices we make around it and how we relate to it. So, you know, in meditation, which is supposed to be about having space in your mind and to not be busy, busy, busy thinking about all the things you have to do later or whatever else, that's not an easy thing to do. So what you do is you note when you are trying to meditate and you realize, oh, I'm thinking about this thing I have to do later or what I'm going to cook for dinner or that I need to call my friend or write that email. You note, acknowledge, I'm thinking right now. And you just send it away and try to bring yourself back. So This awareness that we bring to our communication should be a kind of noting, especially in these early stages when you're just starting to bring an awareness to your communication. Because it's hard to say, well, just just don't be on autopilot. You know, what does that mean? What does that look like? What's that process? And so it's just, to me, slowly building in an awareness by noting when you are feeling like you're on autopilot or noting when you recognize a pattern. And again, not beating yourself up with judgment when a pattern's not going how you want, or you wish you could have shown up differently in a relationship, but just acknowledging. So I think the other words that I would use around awareness and as part of this whole conversation is that it's bringing awareness, and you could also say that it's recognizing, 
or acknowledging or noting different ways that you show up to your communication. Being present, choosing to be present instead of being on autopilot. I think those are all good words to use and ways to think about it. So for me, what it looks like to get aware of things that I previously was not aware of is I think of it like zooming out on myself when I'm in a conversation. I'm zooming out and I'm like watching myself communicate. And that really is helpful with our, you know, CMM-ish perspective of the theory that we want to be, we have to be looking at communication rather than looking through it, ignoring it, you know, for the impact it has on our social world. We have to look right at it. And so if you can zoom out on yourself, I think that's a helpful way to visualize this, to see the communication as it's happening. So if you can zoom out on yourself and bring awareness to the choices you're making, that sets you up to start making different choices. I think part of being on autopilot is forgetting that you even have a choice. You're so used to doing the same patterns or making the same choices over and over and over again that you forget that they were a choice in the first place. They're just second nature. So if you can bring awareness back to those patterns and those original choices that you made, you can question them better and ask, you know, if they're actually working for you, if those are actually the patterns or the choices you want to be making. So turning yourself off of autopilot, bringing awareness allows you to start making different choices. And you lose that when you're on autopilot. So I think the major places that we have to put awareness around our communication is an awareness around our choices and the fact that we have a choice, an awareness around our role in the creation of our social worlds, an awareness that we're even existing in a social world, an awareness around the context that affects us, So if we talk about looking at communication instead of through it, I would say that's an act of awareness. You're bringing awareness to something you were ignoring before. And so I think that's the place to start of seeing this whole process as a practice in bringing awareness to communication, not just, you know, your communication, but communication as a force in your life, in your social world, in your relationships in general. So bringing awareness to your communication and to the role of communication is this practice of acknowledging, noting, zooming out on yourself to see what communication is going on in a moment. And again, that includes, you know, so many things if you're going to break it down, but it starts with an awareness about communication of saying to yourself, communication is happening right now. What am I communicating to this other person? What are they trying to communicate to me? What does our communication look like? Are we effective in communicating? Am I getting my point across? How do I need to change my communication to better get my point across? Something that I like is the way that Kim Pierce explains it, and she compares us to a shark in the water. You know, the shark doesn't have an awareness for the water because it just is. It's all it knows. Um, You know, they don't really have to question it. In that way, our communication, our social world is our water. And we have to ask ourselves, as Kim puts it, what are we swimming in? So this is where the metaphor starts to deteriorate, is that, you know, a shark can't really do anything to change the water, as far as I know. Um, But we do have the power to change our communication in our social worlds. And I see this as being really vital because I believe that things have more control over us when they exist outside of our awareness. Or when we're not talking about them, I think different cultures will have different concepts or ideas that are taboo. 
you know, things that are not to be talked about. And I think by labeling things as taboo, it actually gives them a lot of power. Because in my experience, like I've said time and time again, that the naming things is what gives us back the power when we're able to talk openly about our experiences or have language even to just describe what we're experiencing or thinking or feeling. Awareness allows us to take back that power in the way that naming does because the kind of language I've used the past two minisodes is that it's about bringing things that are in the dark into the light with the knowledge, with the awareness, with the naming that we're doing in this podcast. For example, if you are in a destructive pattern in a relationship, both parties are contributing and falling into this pattern and not being intentional or thinking about the choices, then it's like that pattern is controlling you instead of you controlling that pattern. We talk about unwanted repetitive patterns or URPs in CMM. And it's just this, like exactly what we're talking about, that a lot of times when you start to bring awareness to your patterns, to your relationships, if you look back, use, you know, any of the models that CMM offers, but especially something like the serpentine model, and you can map out a conversation and see, you said this, so I said this, so you felt like you had to respond this way, so I felt like I had to respond this way, you can see the pattern that emerges, and you can see where it leads you. And this is what we created because of that. And a lot of people will say, that's not what I wanted to create. I didn't mean for that to happen. And that's because of autopilot. It's because of a lack of awareness. It's because these patterns are controlling us rather than us controlling our patterns. So what awareness can do for us is help us take back control of our patterns. Our world, our social world, is so, so complex. And that's another thing that we have to place awareness on. Because I think that if you are already aware of just how complex our social world is, even that awareness on its own better prepares you to deal with complexities as they present themselves in your life. Like, I think if you're going through life thinking everything is simple and black and white, and then you get hit with something that is confusing or goes against what you believed about the world, something that challenges you, you'll feel more unprepared and thrown off than if you already know that the world is complex like that. You know, instead of having to deal with the surprise that the world is complex and then the actual complexity you just have to deal with the complexity because you are you already know that the world is so complex. You're already aware that that was a possibility. And the reason it's so hard for me to find a good way to summarize the coordinated management of meaning theory is that there are so many different parts. And that can be frustrating when I'm trying to make it really simple, but it, it really does have to be that way because our communication and our social worlds if I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times. They're so complex. And so we have to have a theory. We have to have knowledge and language and understanding and tools that encompass all of that complexity. Well, that brings us to the end of our conversation today, but you know that we don't stop there. We're always looking towards our next turn. So today, our next turn is to try to be really, really present in your next conversation or interaction that you have after listening to this episode. And you don't have to beat yourself up if you don't do a perfect job at it. You're practicing and you're just beginning to bring that awareness and that on its own is something to celebrate. I think that you have the desire to try to bring awareness and to ask questions of yourself and your communication and to start creating a better social world for yourself. 
So our next turn is bringing awareness and being present in our next conversations and also celebrating ourselves for even trying to do that. So we will be back in two weeks for part two of our conversation with John Burnham. I hope you will join me again for that. First part was an incredible conversation, and I think you'll find the next part of our conversation really fruitful too, something you will surely not want to miss. And again, I now have an email where you can message me because I would love to keep this dialogue going because I feel like this should be a conversation between you and me. And so I'd love to hear what you have to say, your thoughts, ideas, feelings, thinkings, all of it. So email me at storieslived.storiestold at gmail.com to ask questions, you know, share any ideas, tell me about your experience listening to the podcast. And I would especially love to hear about any ways that CMM has shown up in your life or if you've done the next right turn or been able to use anything we discuss on the podcast in your own life. So again, that's storieslived.storiestold at gmail.com. And I'd be so happy to hear from you. Also, be sure to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. Uh, follow us wherever you listen. And another next turn for today is to share this episode or any of your other favorite episodes. You know, bring someone else in your life into this dialogue too. As I've said, everyone deserves to have this information, knowledge, language, tools. Everyone deserves to be empowered by this because everyone deserves those better social worlds. So please bring some people into the conversation with you. Thank you, fellow communicators, for showing up today. Thank you for being so curious and thank you for being a part of this conversation. As always, I'm Abby and this has been Stories Lived, Stories Told. <laughs>